You know, my next guest doesn't like getting paid by the hour because he's coming off a first round submission victory over Christian Rodriguez at UFC Denver last Saturday. It's Juicy J, Julian Arosa, back here on the program. Julian, how's it going? I'm doing fantastic, James. Thanks for having me on again. Always appreciate it. Uh, it's, I mean, we've been doing this for a while. Always good to catch up with you. Um, I know you had mentioned that, uh, you know, in, in, in your interviews going into this fight that, you know, put the money, uh, you know, on this fight to win by submission. You did it. But I got to know, did you expect the fight to end this quickly? Because uh, you went out there, like I said, and, and got him out in one round. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I've always been one of those guys that just, uh, I just, it's kill or be killed, man. I'm never thinking about winning rounds and edging rounds out. Uh, and trying to win each minute by by minute. I, I'm just looking for the finish at all times. And so uh, I think the, the game plan originally was to to get into the grappling a bit earlier, but uh, sometimes you get hit and you just it just it just brings that fire. And like like I said uh, in my post fight interview, it's an acquired taste. And I just love to I love to like test it out and <laughs> test the waters out, especially on the feet. And um, he you know being a 35 er originally uh, didn't have as much power as I expected him to have. And so. Um, after I took a couple of shots from him, I was like, well, I'm not too worried about getting, uh, getting, uh, finished on the feet. So let's just mix it up here and see what happens. Did you know you were like a two to one betting underdog going into the fight? Yeah, that was insane to me. I know he's on a four fight win streak, but Dalgarian fight was, you know, come on, he's gifted that decision. And then, uh, he had missed weight on a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of his other fights. I think he has three bantamweight fights, uh, in the UFC and he missed weight for two of them. And he also missed on his contenders. So it's like, uh, yeah, he's, you know, he won those fights, but he also missed weight, and it's huge at 135 to miss, you know, by four or even a couple pounds. is It's tough. Yeah, well said. Um, did you know he'd never been submitted before? Yeah, he never been finished at all, you know. Um, yeah. And so, uh, but so, so so was Jordan. You know, Jordan never been submitted, never been finished. And but that doesn't like it doesn't make me feel like uh, I feel like sometimes that gives people false confidence uh, in their own abilities of not getting finished. You know, before I'd ever got knocked out, I thought I was never going to get knocked out, and um, you know, it's nice to have that confidence, but it's also nice to be humbled and had been humbled before and kind of go in there with, uh, you know, no worries. You know, I've been knocked out on national television in the UFC before uh, and had the lowest of lows, you know. And so I go out there uh, as cool, calm and collected because I'm not worried about it. You know, some of these guys that have never been finished. They have to worry about that. And so that's in the back of their head. It's not in the back of my head. I've been finished before. Fuck it. Who cares? <laughs> You're surprised you didn't get a bonus. Yeah, you know, two first round gillies against guys that are favorites. Uh, you know, tough guys that, you know, uh, you know, and then and not only did I get the first round finishes, but the fights were pretty insane leading up to those first round finishes. Um, so I was hoping to get a, a bonus, especially on a card where uh Rose Almunis on both of them was the headliner and some of those fight nights that have those kind of fights, um, it's nice to be on because pay per views are hard to get bonuses over, you know, the top 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 tier guys. Uh, but fight nights like that, there's less fights to compete with. And there's, uh, you know, you can be the star of some of those fight nights if you're the undercard guys. And so for me, I was like really excited about being on both those cards and getting those first round finishes. But also at the same time, I got a new contract with UFC uh, leading into this fight. Um, and so I was happy with that. And, uh, you know, I, I, beggars can't be choosers in that sense. They pay me good. And I'm, and I'm appreciative of that. And, you know, if I get a bonus, it's a cherry on top. Um, now, you were telling me off air, you're actually heading back to uh, Washington State, which great time of year. I was telling you off air, the weather out here in the Pacific yeah. Northwest is amazing right now. So good timing on that. But uh, when do you want to get back in there? Because obviously you didn't look like you took much damage. You got a little, little bit on the nose, but other than <laughs> that, you're, you're good, right? Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny because I was in the back and they're doing like the post-fight uh, physical and they're like, yeah, we're going to uh, suspend you for 14 days. And I was like, 14 days? I thought it was seven days. Yeah. They're like, oh, no, because of the abrasion on your nose. And I didn't know it. I didn't feel it or to see it yet. And I was like, oh, do I need stitches or something? They're like, no, you're fine. I'm like, so what the fuck? I have no idea why you're going <laughs> right. to stop me from fighting because of this little thing. It's literally just a little scab, uh, like almost like a fingernail or uh, uh, some Velcro. But um, yeah, uh, I'm going to go back home for a week, uh, kind of visit, uh, take our son home with us um, and be able to see all this side of the family and be able to uh, introduce him to our son. Uh, and it was, you know, it was kind of almost a spur of the moment. Uh, like a couple of weeks before the fight, I was like, you know what? Let's just go back home right after the fight and see everybody. Um, and so we're happy that the weather is going to be nice over there. We're going to be able to see everybody. And then when we get back, I'm going to hop back into training like I always am. And uh, I'm looking to fight possibly, you know, towards the end of this year, uh, November or December. Um, I was thinking might maybe possibly trying to get two this year, but uh, I, well, I don't want to rush anything. You know, I'm happy with how things are going and uh, I want to, you know, take as much time to really dissect my next opponent and figure out who my next opponent is 
and uh, and not try to rush into anything. So no names yet. You're just kind of wait and see what happens when you get back from the trip, and then start figuring out your next opponent. Yeah, I mean, there's you know, there's a few. I mean, even even this weekend, there's three featherweight fights. So obviously, you know, kind of uh, the outcomes of those. Um, I was kind of thinking maybe uh, the winner between uh, Andre Philly and Cub Swanson a couple weeks ago. Um, but uh, I think so. Philly won that fight, and uh, I think Philly's he had just moved to Vegas, and he's potentially going to be one of my teammates. So uh, I don't think that's going to you know pan anymore. Well, but same management too; it'd be easy to negotiate. But yeah, yeah. Well, you know the thing about it nowadays, is especially like uh, the UFC, just like has routes for certain guys, and, and yeah. for some reason they don't want some guys fighting. Like me and Damon Jackson have been trying to fight each other for the longest time. Um, when we when I was on a three fight win streak after Dawood and he was on a four fight win streak after Pat Sabatini, we tried to fight each other. We got the same management and everything. We we're like, well, we'll just do their job for them. We'll just accept the fight and then just move along and just we'll get it done. And uh, they said no, or they they just didn't want to book it for some whatever reason. And then um, he lost two fights in a row, and then I lost two fights in a row, and then won a fight apiece. So uh, we basically had the almost exact same type of record the last six fights and. Then I asked, you know, then we asked again if we could fight and they, you know, didn't want us to fight for some reason. They didn't want to book it. And so they still have it. Like, I don't know if they just don't want me and Damon Jackson fighting for whatever reason, but uh, we're basically on the same path, kind of hovering around, you know, fighting the same type of competition and, and doing, you know, pretty similar in our in our efforts. So uh, I think that would be a good fight as well. But they don't seem to want to have that fight, which is, you know, it is what it is. There's plenty of guys to fight. So uh, I, I don't try to tell the UFC who I want to fight. They tell me who they want me to fight and I say yes to it. That's how that goes <laughs> you know it's funny you mention him because every now and then i'll mix you two up i don't know why because you guys are like tall lanky guys for the yeah. weight class so sometimes I, I don't know why like i get you guys mixed up when i think of fights i think like oh he fought him and it's like no that was yeah. Damon jackson who fought him do you ever i don't know if people ever i don't think you guys look alike or anything but it's just like you know no. similar build and similar fight style too right yeah i mean you know we're you know you know like six foot tall white dudes that are kind of gangly and uh <laughs> you know i think people get me confused also with uh bill algio a little bit of Billy Quarantello, um, you know, we all kind of have that same, you know, facial hair, you know, short, short hair on top and just kind of gangly white dudes. <laughs> and so uh, everybody always kind of conf uh, confuses me with, with a few of those guys. There you go. Uh, we'll got to make sure we set the record straight here. Um, top of your division, it looks like Holloway and Tapori is going to be next. What do you think of that fight and who do you think wins that? Because, you know, the interesting thing, Max Holloway's never been knocked out. Ilya Tapori yeah. can pack a punch. Like, how do you see that fight playing out if it does end up happening? Uh, you know, Tapori is, you know, fantastic in his abilities. Um, but, uh, I think he's a bit more susceptible, uh, uh, to, um, to getting knocked down maybe. I mean, even with the, um, I can't remember that European kid who, who, uh, who dropped him, uh, before he, oh, Jai Herbert. yeah, Jai Herbert. And so I think, uh, Holloway has, you know, kind of that lengthier build too. And so, um, I, I could see Holloway, uh, catching him before he gets caught himself. And so, uh, I do think, uh, Ilya is is a good uh you know is a good change in um in fighting for the title, but uh, I think uh, Holloway is the type of dude that's gonna uh be able to get it back. Um, did you end up watching Nick Diaz or Nate Diaz and uh and, and Moss at all? Did you watch that boxing fight at all? I did not. Are you gonna be watching Jake Paul and Mike Perry this Saturday? That's a boxing fight too. I mean, that's a that's a bit more uh, interesting to think about watching. I think so I mean, too because Perry's at least active and like he's performed well in, in bare knuckle. I know it's boxing; it's a little bit different. But I'm actually curious to see how it goes. I guess the only thing is Jake's going to be a lot bigger than him, but still, it'll be interesting. No, for sure, yeah. But I, mean, I think also like with uh, Diaz and Masvidal, it was like I already watched those guys actually fight. Like, I, know. I don't yeah, really care. I agree. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. Yeah, it's really like they're just going to spar. You know, I I wouldn't be surprised if they hit each other up before. I was like, hey, man. We're both going to make a couple million dollars or whatever it was, you know, and let's just fucking, let's just go out and spar each other. Like, so, uh, you know, I think, uh, that was just the reason why I didn't want to watch it is because I already watched them fight and, uh, and, and the boxing was just going to kind of decline it anyways. But, um, yeah, they, uh, I like Perry, man. Perry's a fucking animal. He's a, he's a sicko. He's a guy that just absolutely loves to fight. And so, uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see how Jake, uh, uh, how, how he does. Uh, with a guy that's willing to freaking just get, you know, hit with everything in the kitchen sink and keep going forward. Well, and Perry's got a bit of a chin on him. I think if you go look yeah. back as far as him getting finished, I think the last guy to finish him, at least in MMA, was Jeff Neal. Uh, and that was like in 2019. Like he's, he can take some shots. And, and you know, again, this will be at a heavier weight class. So maybe he won't be, you know, cutting as much weight. Actually, I don't think he's cutting any weight at all for this fight, right? So, um, I and think boxing yeah, and um, and and I was gonna say that um, yeah, you mentioned the boxing gloves as well. Um, who do you think wins? Because Perry is the underdog, I believe. 
uh, in that. Really? Fight. Yeah. You know, I'm just, I'm just so afraid with like boxing and like, and it being political and like, you know, obviously there's conspiracy around Jake Paul about paying guys to lose for him. Um, I don't think a guy like Mike Perry is willing to do that. Is willing to, uh, you know, uh, lose on purpose just for some money. Um, I think he really, uh, he's one of those guys that really does, you know, is competitive and wants to win the fight. So uh, if he's the underdog, I might try to find a way to put some. You know, we're not supposed to gamble in the UFC, but maybe I can gamble on that a little bit because I think, uh, I think in my mind, Perry should be a favorite just because he's so fucking tough and durable. And he fucking gets hit with knuckles on a regular basis. Put some fucking pillows on each other's hands. I think he can last the entire fight. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the odds right now. Jake Paul's minus 340. Uh, Mike Perry's plus 250. So, yeah, big description. I'm guessing it's because of the size, right? Because Perry's fought mainly at welterweight. Jake's, you know, fought as, like, big as, like, light heavyweight. So, maybe that's... But I think... I honestly think that's more of an uh, advantage for Mike Perry. In the yeah, it could be like, faster, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I go with guys that are smaller, and it's not like... I mean, I get, I mean, I don't know. I mean, maybe Jake can fucking conserve his energy, but uh, I feel like a guy like Perry pushing, you know, pushing the pace will uh, will get him tired. Um, do you think Conor McGregor fights again? Obviously, we're still waiting to see when that fight's getting rebooked. <laughs> yeah, who knows? I mean, I would love to see. It. I still want to watch the, you know, the Chandler and uh, Conor McGregor fights. So I think, uh, regardless of what happens, I think the only option is for him to fight Chandler. So um, if he does fight, at least it'll be that fight. But who knows? I mean. I think it's funny the whole uh, how everybody's like has his memes about him talking shit about uh, RDA's toe or whatever, and then now he's like, yeah, he's, he's, he's out because yeah. his toe, you know. But then again, you hear these things like even Dana White says it's like it's hard to want to get up and you know and go get your butt kicked every day when you're waking waking up in satin sheets and you have hundreds of millions of dollars. So that could be uh, you know one of the, the the issues that is with Connor. Like you have so much money, you're so successful already, like. It's tough to want to do things that you know aren't uh, convenient for you when you have that type of money. Uh, before we go, you mentioned uh, going back to Washington State. Did you hear Dana White at UFC 303 at the press conference, the post-fight press conference? He mentioned Seattle maybe doing an event. Did you hear this? Uh, I think someone had told me about it. Um, because you got to uh, be on that card. You all the Pacific Northwest guys. You Kiesa, Pena. Yeah. You know, I, I think they got to do like a super card with you guys, right? Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. I would love to. Uh, I would love to headline over there. I used to fight in Tacoma, and I would bring literally like 250 people from my hometown and Seattle area uh, to my fights at this, you know, small regional show at the Emerald Queen Casino. And uh, so, if they had me on the card, I would sell probably over 200, 200 seats at least. Yeah, you haven't. Uh, you haven't seen the new arena, have you? The Climate Pledge Arena. Oh, I haven't. No, no. It's nice. It's it's like underground too. Like it's so, oh, shit. yeah. So basically, I, I've gone to one Kraken game. I went a couple of years ago. Basically, like you walk in and you go down this escalator, and the rink's actually underneath. Oh, that'd be yeah. fun. That'd be so awesome to fight in that. Yeah. Damn. So Dana White, make it happen. Let, let's let's yeah. do that. But in the meantime, 100%. man, enjoy your vacation. Uh, it's always it's always nice going back home, especially this time of year, right? So that that's great. But yeah. uh, if there's anyone you want to thank, Julian, any sponsors, any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. Yeah, obviously, I want to thank you know my management, the Radio Sports Agency, Jason House, and all the guys over there um, for you know keeping me in the UFC and giving me these opportunities. Um, obviously, all my friends and family, everybody that is a fan of Juicy J, and uh, you, James, for having me on again.